My daughter's made a few of these book nooks and they came out awesome. So I had to get in on it and I challenged her to a book nook build off. Challenge accepted. For mine, I'm gonna build a replica of my wood shop. And for mine, I'm gonna build an ancient ruins themed book nook. One of the rules of the competition is that we can make use of whatever resources are available to us. So I got my boyfriend's help to cut the wood pieces for the box, since he probably didn't feel comfortable letting me use the table saw myself. Just push it through nice and evenly. Maybe I will do the first one. Okay, sounds good. This is the first time I've made the box myself. In the past, I've used kits that I've ordered online, so I got to be a little more particular about the exact size I wanted. Once I got the pieces cut, I put three of the sides together with some wood glue so I can start on the inside components. The box is extremely simple, but I have no experience with woodworking, so the design of the inside is what I'm gonna focus most of my time on. Since I know I won't compete with Jen on the inside details, I'm gonna have to crush it with the box construction. So to make the book nook's outer box, I cut pieces from quarter inch cherry plywood so that the box is five inches by seven and a half inches. That's the same proportions of my shop. My shop is 10 feet by 15 feet. I'm gonna make box joints on all 12 corners of the box. And so I install a half inch dado stack on my table saw and break out my box joint cutting jig and start cutting the notches for the box joints. There are a lot of notches to cut. It took me quite a while. I'm only showing the process to cut one joining edge here, but I repeated this for all 12 edges. And yeah, this is way overkill for this project, but hey, it's a competition and I'm competitive. Just for style, I want the box joints to show when it's sitting on the bookshelf, so I decide to put a front on the box, and then I need to cut an opening out of the front panel. The walls in my shop are painted this Swiss coffee color, in fact from this exact bucket of paint, so it should match just right. I struggled a bit to get the concrete color right. It's a bit darker than I wanted, but close enough. Let's check in with Jen to see where she is on her book nook. I started by printing off some pictures of columns for the background to give some more detail to the inside. Before getting too far, I made sure to drill a small hole on the side for the string of lights to go through. Some of the components of the inside are things that I bought online, but I did craft some trees out of some sticks and dried moths. It was difficult to keep my workplace organized when my cat kept wanting to interrupt. But regardless, I glued the two trees into the book nook and laced the string lights into the side of it. From there, I worked on gluing down the base of it using moss, rocks, and this column structure that'll be the main focal point of the book nook. I have to make sure to work with each component consecutively to make sure that the layout of the string lights are where I want them, as well as hiding as much as of the wiring as I can along the way. Wow, that's looking great. I need to catch up. So next is to create the miter station top and the workbench top, which have this blue color T-track and also the router lift insert. I'm just going to use a 2x4 to make it out of, and I'm going to cut some tiny T-track slots. This is the smallest router bit that I've ever used, and I'm a bit nervous about breaking it. Just moving really slow, it's really no problem at all, and I have the T-track slots cut. Next, to cut the router lift insert, I do a really bad job with a hand chisel. Mix up some epoxy with some black dye for the router lift, and then mix up some epoxy with blue dye for the T-trap slots. The epoxy has some bubbles in it, so I use a kitchen torch to pop them, and I almost set the thing on fire. And then I notice that the black dyed epoxy is really bleeding into the wood grain. Dang, that's not going to look good. I'm going to call it quits for the day. 
When the epoxy is dried the next day, I drill a hole in the center of the black epoxy and fill it with some red epoxy. Okay, a couple of days later after the epoxy is dry, I send it through a couple passes on the planer and cut it down to size. And the result is, well, it kind of looks like my workbench top. The color bleed on the black epoxy is really bad. I'm using some CA glue to assemble the workbench and adding on some legs. For the details like the router table safety switch or the pull-out joiner, I decided to just take a picture of each, print it out really small, and then glue it on the sides. And this worked great. And now that I know that trick, I plan to use that approach a lot on the rest of the equipment in the shop. But first, let's see what Jin's up to. Once I had the main components in, I put some dried flowers along the rocks for some added detail, along with a miniature sword. I found that trying to secure the sword onto the rocks was really difficult, since it was resting on a very small amount of surface area. But I made it work well enough so I wasn't worried about it breaking off later. After gluing the final background piece onto the plywood, I put the other side of the book nook wall on. This way, I could then fill in the remaining gaps and edges with dried moss and flower leaves to add some more color throughout. There is no way I can compete with that, and I need to catch up. For a good portion of the rest of the shop, I take pictures of each cabinet and machine, print it out to scale, and glue it onto blocks that are also cut to scale. After assembling the floor and two sides of the box, then I can start building out the shop. Starting with the side wall, I attach the upper cabinets and then assemble the miter station. Using a cut section from a wood dowel, I glue on the picture of the trash can. My scrap wood pile is a complete mess. I really need to do something in my shop to organize this better. A toolbox and a drawer cabinet sit in the corner. And there's really nothing against this wall of my shop. It's just a piece of plastic to keep the sawdust off of my wife's car. There's a shop vac for dust collection under the miter saw. I store my planer on a wheeled cart under the miter bench table. And my drill press. The DeWalt compressor kind of hangs out on the floor, and some yellow rubber bands kind of look like the air hose. I use this corner of the shop under the clamps to store crosscut sleds and miscellaneous jigs. And my bandsaw hangs out here in the corner. Although I already had string lights throughout the bottom of the book nook, I thought I would take it a step further and design the inside of the top section to incorporate more of the nature design as well as some overhead lighting. So I put a layer of moss and more string lights woven into the top piece before putting it together. The top piece of wood was just a little too small to meet the side edges, so I sealed it with some wood glue before putting a heavy book on it to let it dry. Hope she's been studying for that PTA exam and not just using the book as dead weight. To do the lighting, I cut a clear piece of acrylic that sits on top of some strips of wood that I glued to the sides earlier in the project. I have to cut a hole in the top of the box to be able to access the lights, turn them on and off, or maybe replace them someday if they burn out or break. So then that hole needs to be covered with something. Okay, so if Jen is going to make use of her boyfriend as a resource, then I'm going to make use of my laser. I cut a circle and an oval with the laser and then glue them together and it makes a nice cover for the lights. And this book nook is done. For the outside of the book nook, I cut some framing pieces to go on the front. I then used some wood stain to cut the color I wanted. I like for the outside of the box to blend into the bookshelf it's going on. I'm also adding a layer of plexiglass to seal off the front of it. This is something that I have to do to keep my cat from ripping out or chewing on the inside materials. 
I just used a plexiglass knife to cut out the right size for the front. After that, I secured the framing pieces. Once that was dried, I finished it with some lacquer that I sprayed on. Yeah, there's no doubt this is the winner of the competition. Thanks so much for watching.